Hey, what's up guys? Joel Adams with Iridesium coming back at you with another tutorial. Today we're going to be taking a look at creating some autocumulus costelianus clouds. In case something is wrong with you and you don't know what an autocumulus costelianus cloud is, be enlightened. They are middle altitude clouds, whatever the heck that means. They signify the coming of a thunderstorm, usually don't have any precipitation of any kind, rain, snow, hail, and uh, they look a lot like Nimbus stratus and stratus clouds, however they are obviously different. I am not a nephologist or a cloud eologist, but I hope to show you how to create autocumulus clouds in Blender today. So with that being said, let us jump right in and get started. We're going to be building these very similar to the way we built the explosion in the last tutorial. So go ahead and add a cube, add a subdivision modifier to it, and set it to 1, hit apply. Then I'm going to scale it out on the x-axis and scale it up a little bit. Add another subdivision surface and a displacement. Click new texture on the displacement and uh, name the texture and the displacement main. Then I'm going to go to the displacement and set it to clouds. Here I'm going to turn the size of the clouds up quite a bit and uh, go ahead and turn the strength of the displacement down quite a bit as well. Then I'm going to add in another displacement. This one I'm going to call bulge and we're just going to leave it without a texture. That will bulge the mesh data underneath. Go ahead and turn its strength down a bit. If you mess with the mid level that will give you different kinds of bulge. Then I'm going to add another subdivision surface on top of this one. and. Uh, Go ahead and tweak the bulge a little bit, turn it up. Now that I've got the subdivision surface on, I'm going to set this one to 2 and then I'm going to add another displacement. I'm going to call this one Detail and uh, make sure that you copy the name and name the texture the same as the displacement. I'm going to go to the main displacement and set the texture coordinates to Global. I'm going to go ahead and turn our detail displacement off and go to the settings for the main displacement. I'm going to turn the size up a little bit, just tweaking it to get the shape of the cloud that I want. If you turn up the contrast, that will give you some more strength. Now I'm going to turn all the modifiers back on, go to the settings for the detail, and set it to Veroni. I'm going to turn the intensity, uh, I'm just going to leave the intensity at 1 actually, and turn the size down. Then I'm going to turn the strength down on the displacement to something pretty low. I'm going with 0.1 here, negative 0.1 or negative 0.2. Now I'm going to go ahead and turn it to distance squared instead of actual distance. This will give us smoother bumps instead of uh, a little point at the tip. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and mess with the brightness and contrast a bit. That looks pretty good. Then I'm going to turn up the subdivision surface to 3, the subdivision surface that is right before the detail displacement. Now I'm turning the uh, detail displacement down to 0.1 and uh, turning the display for the subdivision surface above the detail to 1 or 2. Now I'm going to go ahead and open a little rendered viewport down here at the bottom. and. Uh, Grabbing our camera, I'm going to pull it back a bit, add in a sun lamp. I'm going to rotate this around so we get something more like rim lighting and turn its strength up to 6. Then I'm going to add another UV image editor. This one is going to be for reference images. I'm going to open up a few reference images of auto cumulus clouds. These are just pictures that I got off Google Images. Um, if you search autocumulus costelianus, you should get clouds similar to these, and uh, you can base your clouds off of these reference images. Now I'm going to go ahead, hit new material, delete the diffuse, add in a volume scatter, and plug that into the volume. Then I'm going to go ahead and turn the density of the volume scatter up just a little bit, and uh, go under light paths, turn the volume bounces up to something like 8. Um, although the more you have it, the longer it'll take to render, so I'm going to leave it at 2 for now. Now I'm going to add in an environment texture and just use one of the reference images for the background so that we can get some bluish lighting in the scene. The more volume bounces you have, the brighter your clouds will be. The 
So go ahead and add in a texture. Um, I was pretty sure that it was going to be Mozgrave at first, so I added in a Mozgrave, added in a Multiply math node, and uh, then a color ramp in between, and just plugged it all together. The Mozgrave worked really good for most other clouds in various situations, but it did not work in this particular situation. So after messing around with the Mozgrave for ages, I just ended up deleting it and going with a wave texture. Plug the color into the color ramp and uh, go ahead, set the scale to 0.1, set the distortion to 40, set the detail to 16, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and set the detail scale to 3. Then I'm going to add in a geometry. Plug the position into the vector. This will make it so that as you move around the cube, the clouds change inside. Then just make sure you've got your color ramp cranked all the way up. Um, I think in some of the results, in some of the tests I did, I set it to constant, but most of the time I kept it at linear to give some softer edges to the clouds. I'm setting the scale to 0 0.08, turning the contrast up a little bit. So now I'm going to turn the strength up to something more like 9, maybe 12 and give the lamp a different rotation. Um, I'm going to set the lamp off to the left a little bit and then I'm going to go back to my displacements and adjust them a little bit to just tweak some things. Make sure you go under geometry and set your max transparency to the highest number it can be at. So I'm just going through and continuing to adjust the displacements till I get um, a random shape. Basically what we're just trying to do is break up the edges of the cloud so where the volume texture touches the edges of the mesh, you don't want it to be obvious that it just cuts off. So here I am going ahead and adding in a couple more clouds, sculpting the shape of the clouds in the sky and positioning the camera for a render. I'm setting their strength up to 23 and checking linear again for the color ramp. I think I'm going to end up going with linear. Now I am duplicating the original material and creating a second material. This I will give a reddish viewport color just so that we can differentiate between the two cloud types. I'm going to set the strength for this one down quite a bit so that we get some more mist-like stuff. Set its contrast pretty high and set the value um, down to like 1, the value of the density down to like 0.15, something pretty low just so that it's more like mist instead of actual clouds. I'm going to turn the subdivision surface down one in the render and the viewport so that we don't have, you know, data overload. Then I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this asset around a lot, just creating little wisps of sort of mist around the autocumulus clouds. Basically what I'm doing is sculpting the clouds in the sky with these assets that we've created. I'm going to set its strength up to 0.2, save, and uh, then we are going to work on another asset. Hit Shift C, add a cube, and um, extrude the bottom of it down to make it sort of tall and long. I'm going to add a subdivision surface of 1 and hit apply. Then I'm going to add a displacement, choose the main displacement texture and set it to global so that when we move it around it changes with its position. This is going to be sort of a um, misting rain asset as if part of the cloud is being blown away or um, dissolved off in the sky. Moving it back to its main layer so that we can get some lighting, I am then going to solo it in the small viewport and hit Shift Z to view the rendered. Then I'm going to delete the diffuse texture and add in a volume scatter once again. This time we are going to be using a Mosgrave texture and I'm going to plug the color directly into the density and add a math node in between those two, set it to multiply. Add a converter color ramp in between the Mosgrave and the multiply. Um, I'm going to turn its contrast up and then set it to constant, drag the white back quite a bit um, to the left just so that we can turn the contrast up. I'm going to set its dimension to 0 and its detail all the way up to 16. 
Then I'm gonna set its type to rigid multifractal. I'm hitting shift Z again in the viewport. I'm gonna set its locutionary up to five and set its offset to 0.4. Then I'm gonna set its gain to 0.5 and uh, begin tweaking the contrast with the color ramp. Viewing the volume scatter node again, we can begin dialing the color ramps contrast in um, to exactly how we want it. Then turn up the value of the density quite a bit. I'm gonna go with eight. If you keep the contrast pretty high, it shouldn't matter how thick your density is. Anyways, I'm going to set its scale up to two and add in a geometry node. This, I'm gonna plug the position into the vector. And uh, that should throw your scale way off. Anyways, add a vector mapping node in between the geometry node and the Mosgrave texture. Set the Z to 0.23 so that the texture is sort of stretched out. I'm going to try 0.8 for the X and Y. And uh, change that to 0.6 for the X and Y. Okay, that's pretty good. Then going ahead and adjusting the color ramp again. Um, if you adjust it by typing in the numbers, sometimes you can have finer control um, over what you get than if you're just you know doing it by hand and uh, or by mouse, however you say that. Anyways, that is all right. I'm going to turn the strength up. I turned it down from eight to one. Now I'm going to change it to 1.5 and uh, see what that looks like. So that's looking okay. I'm going to try using B-spline as its fall off in the color ramp instead of constant and um, just turn the contrast up there. Sometimes it can be harder to control B-spline. It's a lot easier to control the constant fall off, but um, it can give you better results in the end, I think. So that's basically the creation of that asset. Now go ahead and duplicate it with Alt D and place it around your scene to um, get some sort of misting rain or uh, dissolving cloud look. So that's looking pretty good so far. Just continuing to use the assets we've already created to sculpt our scene. Um, whenever possible, go ahead and turn the subdivision surface down so that you don't bog your scene up with um, you know a lot of data. So that's looking pretty good. I'm adjusting the strength and the color ramp of some of the materials and uh, going through turning up the mist material and um, anyways then it's about time for a render I think. I'm gonna go ahead and set the samples up to 64 to give us a clearer image. Then I'm going to save it and uh, hit render. <sighs> now I wait for 100 billion years while this renders and um, I will come back. So this is the rendered image and it uh, looks pretty good. Although it does look um, like the main autocumulus clouds are a little too high of contrast. So I'm going to start by turning up their strength and then pulling the color ramp back a bit. Now I'm going to go ahead and turn the mist uh, up quite a bit, its density, and turn the rain density up. It's at 1.5 and um, I'm going to try 2.5. Basically um, most of the clouds in that last render were not dense enough. So I'm just going to hit render again and we will get this, which uh, it looks a lot better. I'm going to save it out and open it in Photoshop. Then I'm going to go ahead, grab a hard brush, and begin painting in a background gradient, very rough gradient, and uh, you know, just one color at a time. Then add a blur, Gaussian blur, and blur these shapes together. This, uh, this method gives you quite a bit of control over your gradient, and uh, you can get pretty realistic results. Um, sounds kind of weird that you would have a not realistic gradient but it does happen. Most of this stuff is stuff you can do in Blender um, with Blender's post-processor but Blender is just a lot slower, not as responsive and harder to use. So I prefer to do my post-processing in Photoshop or GIMP or Krita, which Krita is actually amazingly good software for being free. 
Anyways, um, that's basically it. Hopefully, pretty soon, I will be able to increase the rate at which I put out videos. I'm going to put out at least two more videos on clouds. One of them will be Cumulus Clouds. And uh, that's all I've got for you guys today. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next time. This is Iridesium. Bye.